This is video number three in the Nest API series. The first video covered how to get your token, how to get your authentication, all of the things you need to actually use the API. Video two was real quick on how to use the new Nest integration in point one one seven version of Home Assistant. And this is gonna cover App Daemon. App Daemon is a tool that allows you to run standalone applications within Home Assistant. You basically take the package or the app and you put it in the directory and then uh, fire it up and there you go. So today I'm gonna to show you how I've done that with App Daemon. All right, so let's start off by uh, looking at the GitHub page. Uh, this uh, fine person here has developed this app daemon uh, nest.py uh, application to, to run an app daemon. Um, so in order to use this, of course, you're gonna have to install app daemon and make sure it's up and running. Uh, so we'll do that now. If we go over to supervisor and we click on add on store and we search for app daemon. Here's app daemon four. Now I originally had app daemon three installed and there was a little bit of a change to the configuration. So if you're running app daemon now, there's some steps you need to follow to make sure you're getting up uh, to speed on app daemon. And I'll show you that here in just a moment. So we're gonna go ahead and install it. If you're upgrading from three to four, make sure you follow these steps right here or you're gonna have some errors that aren't going to allow app daemon to start. And we're gonna be doing this in the config app daemon YAML file. You need to be in a terminal or a terminal or in virtual uh, Visual Studio Code, something that allows you to edit the files on your Home Assistant instance. So I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code. And if we go up here, uh, let me just collapse these down and show you where I'm at. Uh, I have it mapped through Samba. So this is Visual Studio Code on my computer and it's connected to Home Assistant via a map of drive H and then we have the whole structure of my Home Assistant instance here. Under config, we have a file called app daemon and we need to find app daemon YAML, which is down here. And this is what your, uh, your configuration should look like when you're all done with this. It should look uh, exactly like the documentation shows. So I basically just copied this documentation and plugged it in. And this is what I have. So secrets, um, that's where my secrets file is. Um, the app daemon, latitude, longitude, elevation is wrong. I'll fix that later. America, Chicago, plugins, has, type, uh, and then the URL, uh, localhost, etc. And then there's some, some dashboard stuff here. So once you have this configured, then um, the next step you want to do is before you start it still, is you want to go back over to this GitHub directory or GitHub site. And this is, this is a way you can do this however you want. What I did was I clicked on this nest.py, I clicked on raw, and I copied control A, control C, copied this entire block of code, went back to my Visual Studio code and created a file under app daemon apps stuck it in here created this file so you know if you're in visual studio code you can do uh, create a new file and all that and then i pasted this entire block that i copied into this file you can download the file from github you can um, there's a number of ways to get it on the home assistant instance i found since it's a single file the quickest way to do it is that and that's what i did Next step you need to do is you need to make sure you go into apps.yaml, which is in the same directory structure over here. You need to have this block of code in your apps.yaml file, uh, exactly as it's spelled out here. Nest module is nest, class is nest API. Your nest refresh, client ID, client secret, and project ID are all over in your secrets file. Uh, potentially you could put them in here, but uh, it's probably more secure to put them in your secrets file. Uh, one thing to note about this, if you add uh, one of these items right here that you didn't have in your secrets file when you started App Daemon, App Daemon seems to cache the, the results of the secrets file. So I had an, initial, an, an, an issue initially uh, when I put nest refresh in there in my secrets file and it never picked it up and I couldn't figure out why. 
And uh, doing a little research, it turns out that it didn't see this because I had it cached when I started AppDaemon. Once I restarted AppDaemon, my Nest Refresh secret showed up and everything was good. Um, all of these items right here, the, the Refresh token, which is what that is, Client ID secret and Project ID are all things that you already should have built out before doing this particular uh, setup. And that is on, like I said, video one, link that above up here. Make sure you, you have a Google account, you have Nest devices in your Google account, and you have all of your stuff set up here. So um, I'm assuming that's what you've done. Now that you have, number one, the app daemon YAML file configured, you have the apps.yaml configured, and you have a file called nest.py in your directory under all of this. We can go back to app daemon and we can start up app daemon. And we can go to log file as always. And it's starting up. If everything looks good, you'll see that you found the Nest app and it found the Hello World app. So two total apps. And everything looks to be just fine. App initialization complete. You're now ready to run. Good. All right. So go back to info page. And I've noticed this with Home Assistant for some reason. Maybe it's just my install. I know it's running because the log tells me it's running, and but it, there's nothing down here to tell me that. So I'm just going to do a quick refresh on this page to reload the page. And sure enough, it's running. So now I can open the web UI and I can double check that I have two apps. Now this Hello World is the default app, so you don't, you don't need that. You can actually delete that from the file. Um, you don't need it. But as long as you have Nest here um, and you have arguments over on the right-hand side, uh, you, are, you can already see it's working here. It's doing callbacks, um, updating devices. Uh, it's working already. So that's a good sign. You can also get an entities list here. And if you search the entities list um, for uh, thermostat, Nest underscore thermostat, that's the entity that it creates. you should be able to see climate and whatever the name of your devices are. I have two thermostats. I have an upstairs and a downstairs, and that's what they're named. So I have climate downstairs, nest thermostat, climate upstairs, nest thermostat. They're both on. The state is on. What that just basically says that they're there and running. If you hover over this block of code here, you'll see a number of things. Uh, these are all the attributes that come back from that particular um, device or that entity. So um, some of these, and I, I'm not sure how this is done in the file. I, I, I don't know why, whether this is just um, the author picked a few things like thermostat uh, temperature uh, and then on or off or whatever. But all I get out of this right now is thermostat temperature. Now what this object also allows you to do is you can go into Home Assistant and you can create a card called, um, it's a thermostat card, I believe, just the generic thermostat card. And you can specify this entity, which I have done. And now you can see that this, all of these things on here, encompass the values that are in this block of code here. So I've got my current temperature, my current humidity, my HVAC action is idle on this particular one. The upstairs one is actually cooling and then my temperature. So you have temperature set point, your current temperature, um, a whole bunch of stuff that's on here. And if you look at this page right here, you can see that all of that is specified on here. So upstairs is cooling, downstairs is idle, uh, and then um, the different modes you can select. Now this does work as well to set the temperature. This is the one thing that makes the app daemon app um, kind of above the rest at this point it has all of the attributes or states available to set modes on the thermostat. Uh, so that means that you can change the temperature here. You can slide the slider here. You can set the modes, different modes here. You can get the outputs, the states and everything else. On the current Nest integration, all you can do is read the temperature and humidity. On the video that I made that had node red, I don't have anything in there to set the temperature. All I can do is read it. Now you can do that. You just have to build it all out. 
there's the ability to um, use automations with the the nest.py app daemon app as well. And I've seen some of that demonstrated. I'm not going to do that today. I'll leave the automation part up to you if you want to do that. Um, but you hear, here you go with this. Now, I also want to display on my dashboard, I want to display the temperatures for my temperature or my up and down thermostats, which is what this is right here. These are native within the nest daemon or nest.py app daemon app. The states are not. Um, I don't know if that's something that would be built in later. The, that that app, if they if they update it, that nest.py file, all you do is replace the nest.py file with the changes and everything's good. So if they add those sensors later on or pull those out, then you'll get those. But I built a couple, so I'll show you that now. So if we go back over to uh, my sensors file, you'll see that I've created two sensors, an upstairs HVAC state and a downstairs HVAC state. And then they're exactly the same. So the platform is a template. The sensor is called upstairs HVAC state. The friendly name is upstairs HVAC state. The value template is the, the part that gets the, the data out, right? So if we look back at um, the app daemon app and we hover over, we'll see at the very bottom, and if I move my mouse off, I can't show you. But anyway, at the very bottom, you'll see the attributes of current temperature, current humidity, HVAC action, and temperature. And so in order to get that HVAC action, we have to build this sensor that I'm talking about. So we basically follow down the tree, um, just like you would any other JSON object, right? So we're gonna look at the state attribute, not the states, but the state attribute here. And it's gonna be climate, which is the, uh, the area or the, the sensor type and then downstairs nest thermostat. And then that is the entity. This, this whole thing uh, is the actual entity. And then the, the item you want is actually this one, HVAC action. So you could, you could have essentially come back over here if you wanted anything from this particular, uh, this particular entity, any of these attributes that are showing here, you could pull that out. So. Maybe I want to know what my my mode is, my eco mode, what what I'm sitting in, right? So um, I could pull that out by by specifying that here as well. So by doing these two things, adding these two sensors, I am now able to go back to my dashboard, and I'm able to pull the AC state and display it on my dashboard. Now I also you also notice this is a blue fan, and this is nothing this means it's not running this means it's running on and on ac and so if i go back to my dashboard so what i'm looking for is i'm looking for um, nest down and what i've done here is i have created a button card so this up here these are button cards i've added the entity sensor downstairs hvac state and that's this one right here, sensor downstairs HVAC state. And then I've set some other, some variables, show states, false, so it's not gonna write the actual words of the state on it. The icon's true, the name is true, and then I come down here, uh, apply some styles, and then on this card, you can set some different uh, icons based on the state of the card. So value cooling, sets me an icon of air conditioner, value idle, sets me a uh, fan off icon, and then a value of heating sets me radiator, which is like this little red heating thing that goes up. All right, so um, that's basically it. So you make sure you install App Daemon, get it up and running before, before you do try to do any of this other stuff. Um, you can try to run App Daemon before you put the nest.py file in. It will run fine as long as the hello world uh, app shows up. So if we look at apps, before you go copy this nest information in, you can start app daemon up and just make sure you get a hello world. So if you're having problems with this, um, I would back up and just do that. So let's, um, in, in addition to that, before you do anything else with the app files or the app daemon files, um, before you specify the apps, 
if you want to test with just the hello world, don't put anything else in here. And then just run it up with hello world to make sure that works. Once that's working, then you can start doing the rest of this stuff. I didn't have any issues necessarily with app daemon itself, except that I needed to upgrade from three to four because I was running three in the past. Um, so once I did that, everything was fine. Um, so install app daemon, uh, go to the GitHub site, grab your, um, grab your files, set the configuration up in all in the app daemon YAML file for starting it up apps YAML for this nest module. And then the hello PY, or I'm sorry, the nest.py file, put that in there and then um, start it up and then go back in and check your sensors, your entities in app daemon, like I showed here. Here's all your sensors. If these come in, then you're good. You can also watch the apps and see that you're getting callbacks from Google. And then um, after you do all that, start building out what you want to do with it. So that's app daemon uh, and the nest API. Um, three different methods now you can do. Uh, watch all three videos. M make sure you watch the very first video that tells you how to get all your Google stuff set up. The app daemon nest program allows you to do a little bit more with the API than the other two methods that I've shown. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below in the comments. Uh, hit me up on my Discord server if you have any questions. I usually pay attention to that a little bit anyway. And then hit the subscribe button, hit that bell icon so you know that uh, I've got new videos coming out. And make sure you hit that like button, and we'll see you on the next one.